Hello everyone, welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. I have a 1v1 for you guys today. This is one of the practices I've done to get a little bit of a return to ranked here shortly. So this is a public match against a Colonel Tracer Bullet PI. And I am on the bad side of hell in a very small place as Scandi Mac. Yes, I'm playing Scandi Mac again. Uh, I do have a favorite deck indeed, but this is, <clears throat> well... It's something I wanted to talk about because for a long time I resisted the idea of good side, bad side, and by the way, bridge glitch, thank you. But um, I, I think sometimes the idea of it is worth considering, especially on Hell in a Very Bad Place, and I don't think it's a, yes, this is always good, yes, this is always bad, I think it's more of a <clears throat> good side versus bad side as a function of time sort of thing, so... You'll notice I have to spend points over in Bravo, and, well, my opponent does not. He can go all in on Golf. We're engaging here. I have a couple of Laros, well, more than a couple of Laros, going up to screen to take that initial contact, get a kill or two if I can, see if I'm 30 ends. SG every one on 3D is coming up behind it. But, <clears throat> I mean, if I spend my points in Bravo and I, you know, did an Echo Cap and all this, if Tracer Bullet PI wanted, he could just have an additional 150, 200 points compared to me right now, right here. And we see that Leopard 2A4. Now, he did know I was playing Mech, and so the 2A4 is actually a really wonderful choice. I like that choice a lot. It will definitely deal with any of my tanks, at least one-on-one, -on -one, <clears throat> and it won't cost him the same as a full super. Now, we have double automatic here, and, you know, for as much as I play decks with the automatic in it, I don't think I've really done that much, the double auto sort of tactic and uh well we'll see how it goes for this guy here today and you know, well we've got our reach around defense here in bravo we've got live garden all these boxes and the nice thing uh, pardon that cut i'm coughing still a little bit here have been since the second of the month and really i'm quite tired of it but you know such is life so 103ds c930 and stormer um the nice thing is that I still haven't lost this section of golf completely. It's difficult to retake the town, but this is a hold on a knife's edge, and watch this. Let's see. Oh, man. I thought it was right there. Maybe it's just in just a second here. Yep, there it is. That double auto's coming back up. And at least if I control this, too, you know, I was sitting there thinking, okay, well, this could be worse anyway, but Panzergrind do get one of the C930Ns, and this is why these sort of heavy IFEs, even Martyr 2s, really shouldn't be in Deep Woods unless they are well microed and taking their proper engagements. And right there, we have the Leopard 2A4 racking up a kill on the other one. And I've just lost 50 points of heavy IFVs for nothing. So, so far, this is looking pretty bad. I have a plus two tick, but I'm, I'll tell you right now, on hell, if you cannot hold this middle position here, your plus two tick at the beginning will not matter. It just won't matter. I've lost games uh, where I've been up to 300 points on tick on hell just because... What am I supposed to do if I lose Golf and Fox entirely? But I did mention the idea of... Oh, this was disgusting. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. Look at that. Anti-air, right? Um, I did mention the idea of good side and bad side as a function of time, and we're going to hopefully see that as the game goes on. I have not been able to deal with Red's pressure here at the beginning, but if I can then they really don't have a lot of tools to deal with the fact that I just get Bravo for free. So, well, it's not really for free, but for minimal points investment, right? I don't really have to fight him here. I can sort of now that I know that Red isn't going over into Bravo, frame this as a, okay, I get a plus one if I can at all contest these two zones, right? This is not a neutral fight for me. These are not both middle zones that I have to win in order to get tick. It's not really like paddy field or mud fight in that way it is unique and love it or hate it it is unique so i've lost the building now i'm you can see i'm trying to build up some defenses around the top part of echo and yes i do know that the music here is still a little bit on the techno end but you know i gotta say it makes me happy and i'm enjoying it and uh if that changes i'll change it and if you guys complain a lot i'll change it but to be honest while i do see that and i do value that when I don't have music, I get complaints about the background noise that it's not covering up anymore. And when I do have music, it doesn't really matter what type, somebody is unhappy. So I'll try and do my best. Um, and usually usually that for me is making sure I'm happy when I record. And for right now, this is making me happy while I record. So we're going to roll with it. Now, I do have <clears throat> a little bit of a plan here, which is if I can't bust through... Oh, this was a nice pickup. If I can't bust through those 2A4s 
front on with one of my 103Ds, and I really don't think I can. I mean, there's at least two of them in here, there's double auto, then we're going to be a little bit of an infantry deck, and we're going to go around the side. So False Kamiga 90 going up here and over. I do also have Deckensgruppe, or Ildstattegruppe rather, because they are the Scandinavian version. And here I made a bit of a mistake. These guys are actually Ildstattegruppe 85, which are 15 points instead of 10. It really makes the way that I like to use them a lot less cost effective. So we do have RM70s, I believe, coming in from the Red Fort player, and not a lot of effect there. So one calm, one worried, really no damage on either, and we're pulling out a puff. And you might be thinking, you know, a puff, really? It's dry seed, is that really a smart thing? But the idea here was to stay far enough back that I'm not going to be the target of my enemy's anti-air. I doubt that they're going to be able to get a plane over in time to hit me. And I've seen a lot of action off double automatic. I might be able to get a pickup for, well, equivalent cost, right? Because the puff is 80 and the automatic is 80. And the second I come in and get one of those and get out, everything else that that puff does is gravy. But because my opponent was microing his automatics instead, I've just cost myself 80 points, most of a minute's worth of reinforcements, and gotten nothing for it. And I would bet if any of you were gambling war gamers at the moment, you would have an idea of which way this match is going. And I mean, hey, right? Like that's another reason why I thought this one would be uh, worth worth recording with you guys, worth talking about with you guys. And of course, any and all comments are always nice to see. So. Second RM70 was sort of what I was thinking there. I wasn't sure what the reload time was on that, and I think actually that's still just one, because it seemed like it was well microed, well paid attention to, and fired sort of at the early end of its operational capability, shall we say. So uh, then we do have a Scania here, and this was really crazy. Look at this. These guys are calm. The Scania is calm. This is stopped. They're right on top of each other. Okay. Resupply, please. This is on. Yes, this is on. In game, I was clicking the Scania and then right clicking the STRVs, and then it just it wasn't moving. They weren't resupplying. It was just oh, it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. So at this point in the game, I was worried about my opponent trying to push up onto high side of Fox. So you can see that's why I have the Storm Engineer 90 CV9030 ends right here. These guys will deal with armor very well. And then this position back a little bit farther will mean that if my opponent pushes up with infantry, I can come out to the side and engage them and do that in a way that won't get me Im immediately fired upon by anti-tank weaponry. So we have helicopters coming over here, and I do believe Tracer Bullet PI saw this occurring, at least he saw the bells. And usually when you see that, it is going to be some sort of fight around the flanks. Now, I do want to point out, Fennec 20 mils are 30 points, and they are rather fragile. They're not you know, incredibly fragile at 6 strength, but to infantry tertiaries in the woods, that was very, very quick. And right there... I've just paid for one of my false from Jaeger 90. This is a second one. If I get that too, I've now paid for both. And finally, finally reloading. I have no idea why. We're shaken now. I don't know. Calm, nope. Shaken, yes. <laughs> I don't understand this game sometimes. <laughs> um, so picking up both of these Fenix if I can, just it justifies the false from Jaeger 90. It doesn't justify the bells. It's important to remember this is an additional 30 points. But it would justify the false Kermager 90 in here, especially if I can pick up any more kills. And the idea was just use these guys to go in deep because they are capable anti-infantry and follow up with the Yields Delta Group 85 over to this side and cut off this forest in coordination with a push to retake this main section of town. So I wanted to basically take this zone, looking at it this way, cut off the, the left side third and really just take a lot of control of that section. But we have... Boxes moving in, and, you know, I wasn't sure if they were carrying something. If they're carrying infantry, STRV 103Ds in the woods are not what I want to have going on here. So we're moving up the RFKs. We have another herd of RFKs. These guys are goofy. They're, you know, one front armor, 10-point, recoilless rifle, boxes, but they move at the same pace as my other mechanized stuff. So that is actually pretty nice sometimes. And there we go. Very nice. Now, my opponent has capped. It's 70 points to 1 because I have Captain Bravo. A little bit of a micro mistake here. This M621 should move away immediately because it is easier to spot than my CV infantry. And this was really kind of cool. These False Kermager 90 can deal with high match suits in just fine. And the sequential engagement of the, the boxes by Tracer PI was well done. So the high match shoots and go in. The foolish Scandi mech player turns on his tertiary. And then, you know, he sees that I'm engaging the boxes. Okay, bring the Fennec over. And I had to manually re-engage the MG3 and take down that Fennec. So this was actually a really high micro situation. 
Um, we engaged the tertiary, turned it off to engage with the secondary, turned it off to engage with the, with the tertiary, and had to select the Fennec 20 mil as the appropriate target. And here it comes, boys. Scandinavia, air tab, picking up one, two targets on one pass. One, two, a four, gone for 103 points, and one automatic for another 80. Over 200 points of return off that one. And we take down the block 15, trading it for a puff. Beautiful engagement right there. Beautiful engagement. I mean, look at that. 20 seconds, over 330 points <clears throat> lost by the red four player in, I mean, 30 seconds or less, right? Those two pickups were immediate and then the immediately sequential plane engagement just couldn't really have asked for better unless, of course, I had asked for, you know, retaking the town that was this objective. And now we get into sort of what Red hopes to do here because Red doesn't need to win on kills. This is conquest, it's not destruction. So if every single trade is bad for Red, but they hold on to enough of golf to win them the game, then so be it. But what's happening right now is, since I'm up on points, red needs to spend points on a cap, and they can't really do that comfortably as long as I'm applying pressure. If I'm not applying pressure, then that cap will come out. So by continuing to do this little bit of a, a blind rush here, by continuing to engage on multiple locations, I'm attempting to forestall my opponent's ability to begin to actually win the game, which right now, in terms of map control, they're in a position to do. And this could cause some bad trading for me, and I'm leveraging that against how good that previous engagement was. So that's sort of the calculations that are going on here, and this was just nasty. Man count one, six by six, and we get it. Very nice, and there's the 2A4. Would be engaging well here, except now he knows, now he sees it coming, and boom. You turn to face that, and I get side armor. F16A MLU coming in, Another 130 points there, picked up away from the Red 4 team. And that's actually going to justify Strip EV90. So 130 points killed on the board, 130 points from me spent on a command vehicle. That is equalization of income, shall we say. That is just, okay, I have the space to do this because if my opponent re uh, replaces his tools on the ground, it'll cost him the same as it will cost me to begin to tick plus one again, which is, of course... The main objective of the game. Now, Jaeger 90 are out of their Carl Gustav M3s, which is the only reason this NM is still alive, and we're going to be following up with some mortars, Live Garden, trying to clear these sections of woods. I should have fire support behind here, but I don't because my 103Ds are a little out of position, and I should have just come back and then come forward and just reversed out and then engaged because if there was anything more than high met shoots in here, it would be a little bit of a difficult time, but this is this is part of why Ildstadza Grupa are so nice. The 85 version, yeah, but really I, I like the base version even better because I mean, look at this. We're gonna kill at least a couple of boxes, and you know, my guys, if they cost 10, then I would get a much better return here, but even at 15, okay, well, we just purchased one of the old Stata Group 85 just off the box trading, not even including the fact that we killed his old Stata Group 85 and some high match shoots in, and we created that situation where we picked up a Mancot 1 and a 2A4. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So these guys, I mean, I really think they're quite valuable. There is another 2A4 coming in, and honestly, if Tracer Bullet PI did nothing but buy those tanks and militia, I'd have a really hard time, because they are still something where I need to go into the plane tab to deal with it, and that means that, you know, anti-air, ASFs, things like that, will be very impactful for defending my opponent's assets, and it's part of why picking up that, um, the block 15 in that first trade was very nice because it told me one, what ASF is my opponent using, and two, well now he has one fewer of them. Most people take those two at elite, so he has one left. I have two. I also have my MLUs. So those are not, you know, head-to-head -head fighters, but they are backup because they have AMRAMs. And we're just gonna be putting on mechanized pressure once again, bringing out some Laros, Gavarman, and then 135s, Livgarden 85, more Gavarman, more and then 135s. I just want to squeeze this zone as much as I can because the fact that there is a cap in golf now tells me something. It tells me that there are points now from red after taking all of those losses that aren't here, that aren't up at the front holding this line. In other words, it's a perfect time for me to be able to push with a higher expectation of success than my previous one. The previous pressure has worked, basically. It's, it's given us some forward motion in this game where I've been otherwise locked out of an entire zone of the map. And to go back into it one last time here, this is the point where I think the the spawn on my side switches from being the bad side to being the good side. Because we're far enough in 
and there's been no motion in Bravo, that now I get to control the pace of the fight. I can counter cap and Fox, and it becomes a question of, can my opponent hold against where I'm pushing? Rather than, can I hold against where he's pushing, or can I hold even this little bit of a toehold? I have, again, I'm 70 points to 17 here. Red needs to clear me out. And if I get enough space on this side of golf to get a cap, that could just be game right there. So 103D is moving forward. Gavarman dealing with Panzergren 90. Not ordinarily an ideal matchup, but they both have versions of the MG3. Gavarman will actually do better there than you might think. I wouldn't wager two Gavarman against two Panzergren 90, all else being equal, you know, healthy uh, units. But when they're damaged, yeah, Gavarman can get the kill pretty easily. Now, this was interesting. Automatic there, I'm driving into it. I know it's going to shoot things. I know it's going to kill things. I know I might lose the CV9030N and all of that, but I'm doing it because here comes the MLU and I need vision and we just need to take this thing out. CV9030N is dead, but the missiles were just away in time, the last second, and we pick up another 80 points there. Actually, probably trading decently even with how much I had to sacrifice to get that kill, which is one of the reasons that people hate Mac, is it's just like, oh, really? 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 And yeah, that was a really moment uh, right there where I get the missile off at the last moment in time it was possible. But, you know, it works. <laughs> and if it works, it works. So CF-104 from Tracer Bullet P P I P I P I. Yes, not P1. And the CF-104 buys, honestly, are the, the thing that I question the most. The initial one, maybe not. But this one, yeah. Because I get that the initial one was supposed to come over here and take out my Falskrim Jaeger before they were able to touch down and do that really devastating flanking maneuver. So I understand it. But what is a what is that going to do against my ASF? What's it going to do against my Puff, my MLU? Maybe it's just there for air detection? But if memory serves, the air detection isn't amazing on that thing anyway. So... I, again, not really certain. Not really certain what's going to be happening there. And look at this. One, two, three RM70s. And at least it's a lot of suppression. But honestly, look at that. Clipping right through the hill. Beautiful coding, Eugen. Um, I'm not really sure what that was in preparation for. So there's no push that I can see right now coming in. And maybe there will be in a second. But it needs to be tight coordination. Because the second those volleys are done, I start to regain morale. So we're going in, I got a missile off, we got a hit, I was trying to see if I could get some anti-air or other sorts of, of picks here, that's why I had the puff in behind it, the MLU in behind it, but unfortunately no, all we've managed there is to extend the reload time of a single uh, 104, which, okay, that's not exactly an achievement to write home about, shall we say. Um, on the other hand, we're getting more Falschmjager around the side, we're just going to rinse and repeat against this guy, refuse to take those engagements against the 2A4s, and try to get more and more and more and more value until the time where I feel comfortable that I can push. And that that could well be coming up, right? So the biggest danger to me right now is if Red decides to shift field. If he comes up here right now, what am I supposed to do to block a 2A4 here? I have Live Garden 85, yes, and they do have longer range on that M3, but if there is, you know, if he just is like, you know what, to heck with this lane, I'm coming over here, I'm going up, I'd probably lose the CV. And that sort of rotation is something that uh, it has risks, but it also has huge rewards. So on the one hand, he'd be letting me take advantage of a weaker position in golf. But if he does it in a way that I don't expect, if he does it during a timing where I'm not pushing him, then he can basically get it and then even rotate back, potentially before it's too late. And on hell, I think that rotation is, is actually really crucial because there's not a lot of space between here. Really, I mean, it's right back this way, right over this way. <clears throat> and especially for an unspec deck that should have some motorized assets, although not all that many, I suppose. Um, I feel like it's worth considering it. Even just doing little bits of probing attacks and, and things like that. Because, I mean, this is just sitting out there in the open. I should have another Live Garden 85 up here, and I don't. So, you know, not the best positioning for me. I think maybe the intention from Red was to do that approach through this section of woods, and it just never really materialized. Um, but you got to be flexible with this. Like if you if you run into somebody, and I think this is something I fail at doing all the time too. It's hard to be flexible. Uh, if you run into somebody who just takes your initial plan and crushes it because their opener countered it, or their their deck composition really deals with yours very well, you have to be able to say, okay, 
this isn't good enough, I need something new. And that something new can often shake up the game, put your opponent in a situation where he's not comfortable, and get you back into it. And, okay, this was just... Goodness gracious, look at that. 20 live guard in 85, and... 20 live guard in 85. Three RM70s centered on that. Well, maybe not centered, but very nearly centered on my live guard in 85, and we just don't care, man. We're just keeping on going. And actually, we're panicked, but so are the Panzergren 90 here. And once again, microwing whenever we see boxes. This position will crumple, but not as easily as I think Red was hoping, especially because I do have mortars coming in for a little bit of light support. And here we go, we are getting suppressed. There's just too many M2 Brownings off of these boxes. <laughs> it is just goodness gracious. And yeah, I think that was his plan. I think Red's plan was just to say, you know what? To heck with you, I'm going to leverage this section of forest and use it to win both zones, because that is the by-the-book approach for red side of the map right now. You win this, you win the game. Very many, very many people will tell you that very, very often, because it is just such an important leverage piece. But we have a 2A4, we have more Gavarman coming over here. I just, I love doing this. It's, some people say that it's dirty, <clears throat> and to that I say against very new players who aren't aware that this is part of the map, yeah, I can see that. But against a colonel, no. I can guarantee you this guy has not only seen this, but more than likely done it as well. So, Gavarman are chasing that 2A4 out of the woods. Unfortunately, not great AT on these guys. We're just going to deal one point of damage per hit to the front armor there. But it really is just a squeeze mechanism as we bring in more mechanized assets and more and more and more. And here comes the tide. Because, you know... I feel like I have momentum. So c 9030 is coming in, Laro is coming in, Fennec Toe 2 is going to be um, kind of a strike plane type usage here, at least when I see a target that I want to go after, and I don't think there's anything left. That's what I'm That's what I'm gambling on right now. I think that 2A4 is very lonely, and if I can get something up there to see it, that Toe 2, we can do very, very nice stuff. So Fennec 20 mil, Toe 2 coming around, and okay, it's not completely alone. There it is right there, and one... MLU coming in, we pick up an automatic, and we pick up the 2A4. <laughs> oh my god, the up that MLU, guys. If I mean, yes, it's nice to have two, but you can't put a price tag on that sort of performance. And in the meantime, the Toe 2 was able to come in here and take out, where is it? It's right there. A Geppard, or a Roland, one of the two. So there's a single 2A5 left over on this side, and at this sort of range, I'm actually completely comfortable taking that fight with 103Ds, so we're coming up here trying to let that 2A4 think to himself, okay, well, we're going to pick up some IFBs, we're going to get a good engagement, and then my 103Ds want to just pop right out of the woods and get a kill, but he's retreating back. I thought that this was a CV, and it's not. Um, it's actually an Ildstata Grupa, I believe, and there's the CV. So Panzerkampfwagen Leopard 2, we spot it, Puff coming in to pick up anti-air, and unfortunately, my MLU was on cooldown, so I have to do more than just, you know, a single trick the entire game. But, yeah, we have tools for that. We have tools for that. So the 103D is pounding into the 2A4. We get that kill. And Givarman, their whole job right now is to come up here and make sure that I can spot that 2A4. I don't want them firing at it. My weapons are all off. I just want to be able to get something close enough where I can sort of peek through the smoke and make sure that I can see it. So double 104 coming out. I think this was a little bit of a fighter screen. Um, and of course, I mean, it's nice to get that helicopter pick up, but we get one, we get two, and alas, not for free. My opponent's anti-air finally working just a little bit, but we've also gotten through on this side. And Livgarden 85 are a wonderful, wonderful unit for this sort of push, because that longer range Carl Gustav M3 will be able to hit things like the Fuchs, even at sort of across the, the little pond here, if need be, places like that. So my opponent's running away. We're taking in a plus two now, having not brought in a cap for golf, but just forced them out of Foxtrot and gotten the kill with double 103Ds on the golf cap. So, I mean, yeah, as long as this Fuchs is moving, and that's going to be the game. So my opponent very much forced into a bad situation. And, you know, we were on the back foot for a while. I was on the back foot for, for quite some time, and then just... You get good trading, you keep the pressure on, and eventually you flip that situation on its head. Mech is very good at doing that, and it's a style of play, honestly. I know it bugs a lot of people, but it's a style of play that I really enjoy, just because you can look at the, the map sort of like a puzzle, right? And you can play slow, you can play cautious, you can play intentionally. 
and really try to get the most out of your units. And sometimes the most out of them means sacrificing in them at the right time for the right pickup. But hey, that's the game. That's war game. That's how it works. So uh, F F16A block 15 with four playing kills, including three CF-104s, definitely worth it, even though we did lose it there toward the end. And this really made me happy. MLU, perfectly balanced as all things should be. One, two, three, two A4s and one, two, three automatics. Could not be happier with that of the MLU this game. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around and we'll see you again real soon.